One, two, one, two. This is Major Journalism. This is David Trom Big Shanks, your host. Got a special uh, commencement of a show today. Uh, I convened some of my brothers to have a conversation. Um, I plan to do this from time to time. So this is not really a hard topic like some of the episodes have been. This is more of a general topic, but I thought it was important for me to bring in some minds some brothers that I know have some opinions, um, just to have a conversation about brotherhood, manhood, and just uh, black manhood. I mean, there's a lot of conversations going on in the uh, ethos, in the zeitgeist, and um, it's probably too many conversations. At the same token, um, there's not enough conversation about particular topics. So I wanted to convene a conversation with some brothers that I respect. Um, I got and have some history with as well. So you're going to get sort of like a uh, formal intro. And then as the conversation starts to flow, you'll see, you know, my ways of knowing kick in and I'll start calling the brothers by their other names and things of that nature. So first, uh, I guess in chronological order, or if I'm going in chronological order, that's confusing. But because <laughs> you know you know brothers but you know you might not know them so i've known trey longer than i've known flizzy but i've known flizzy longer than i've known trey so uh you know if we're gonna go back to brooklyn i'll say i'll start with william grady the third um my man trey he's the uh ceo and founder of third degree productions which has some um real Real dope content coming soon, and um, we can get into that uh, later if he so chooses. But uh, my brother, William Grady. Peace, King. What's good? What's good, brother? And my brother, uh, Floyd Simmons, uh, serial and serial entrepreneur, um, Pangeon Granola, um, a.k.a. the Definitive Virgo. That's his brand. Indeed. Um, This is my brother from uh, Queens, New York. So uh, this is a, you know, whole borough type of contingent i guess we're all from the island of long island you know what i mean technically so this is technically like, yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> One land mass. yeah 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 so brothers um like i said i wanted to bring you guys in and have a conversation I guess, i'm gonna start with an antidote to kind of bring us in uh you both know that i transitioned made a move to uh georgia in the last year and In that, even prior to making the move, we had conversations about like where I would settle, where, you know, best place to take the fam. It's funny because there's a lot going on right now in the zeitgeist and the media around culture. Uh, So it's it's a timely conversation. But I was jogging the other day in my cul-de-sac, you know what I mean? Mm. (laughs) So Mm. I'm jogging through my Mm cul-de-sac. In my subdivision, you know what I mean? All of that, mm-hmm. all of that, all of that grown man talk. I bust a left. I'm coming through. I'm jogging. I'm going to the health store. I'm like, I'm a jog at the health store, get a smoothie, do my mile, or whatever. I bend the corner in the cul-de-sac. I'm doing a nice little speed. I hit the corner. I see two little white girls, probably nine, ten years old in that area, playing outside. Hit the corner. I'm running past them. Something kicks in my back of my mind. You mm. better not run past these white girls like you like you're running mm. away from something. <laughs> you mm. might want to turn around, slow your speed, be aware of your surroundings, right? Mm. I'm mm. like, and it's not that I slowed down, but when the thought hit me, it fucked me up. Absolutely. Because I said, oh shit, I'm Art Aubrey. Yeah. And then I couldn't run anymore because now I'm in my head like. Man, you spent all of this time, energy, and resources to so-called pull yourself out of a certain environment and put yourself in a different environment that's safe for your, uh, you know what I'm saying, family. But you're not safe. Safe from whom? Safe from whom? 
And I'm like, you're no safer than you would be if you had bent that corner running in your hood. You'd have you a complete been, different fear. You would have been safer in your hood. You Exactly, but they're not uh-huh. safe, right? Because if I bent that corner in the hood and seen 5-0, I'd have, thought, I'd have thought the same thing. You better slow up. You better not be running right. like you're running from something. <sighs> so kind of the theme for the first part of this conversation is where are we safe? In America, where is the black man from, or brother safe in this country? You, I'm not you, safe you, in the burbs, and I'm not safe in the hood. Where am I safe? You know what I mean. Me, and I, and having that thought, <clears throat> as soon as I thought about Ahmad Aubrey, I thought about Nip. Mm, I said, okay, well, you can get murdered running past a construction anyway. site in the wrong subdivision because you just don't look like you should be there. You could get murdered coming home from the store by neighborhood watch because you're not supposed to be there. But you could also get murdered in front of your store in your hood by someone from your set. So where are we safe? If you don't mind. Of course. This is going to actually tie back into the conversations that we don't have that get to the heart of this conversation it's mental health the one thing that we know for certain is that none of what you did led to a bad outcome so the place that you didn't feel safe was your own mind you had 15 different scenarios that you just ran through mentally that had a physical reaction to your spirit your body it made you hesitate you paused, you debated, you thought about none of these situations that you actually go through, but you have to, as a black man, because we're talking as brothers here, as a black man, you had to swallow, ingest, absorb, take in the experiences of men who look like you, who are doing what you do, who did what you did, and you took on that trauma mentally. My my version of that is around the same time, two years ago, I'm working for the census. It's right, right beginning of the pandemic. I'm working for the census. And that's when George Floyd, that's when that ridiculous shit had popped off. Being that that's my and my dad's birth name, the trauma that I had to go through hearing that I was killed by police every six minutes. I didn't know that that I, I'm not I'm not Floyd. I'm I'm not George Floyd. But hearing your name over and over and over again as somebody that was killed by police, that's a trauma that I had to absorb and eat even though it wasn't me that had gone through the situation. The place that black men have to begin to feel safe is in their own minds. We have to have these conversations with Brothers like you, Trump. Brothers like you. Well, I got a small group of friends that I keep in contact with, damn near on a daily basis, and we literally just chop it up about what we're going through. And that's where this all has to begin, because you don't feel safe on the streets in Atlanta or in Georgia. You don't feel safe on the streets in Brooklyn. You don't feel safe on the streets of Florida going to get a bag of Skittles and an iced tea. We don't feel safe uh, uh, trying to uh, cash a check in the store. So we at least got to feel safe in our own minds and and in conversations with the people that are around us and that care about us. Like, I think that's where all of this begins, because geographically, no, nah, I don't think there's a place where we can completely let go and feel and, and let our guard down. So we have to be that for each other. We got to geographically be that for each other. Like Trump, I'm a safe space for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think that's where it all has to begin until we can figure out how to really find a spot for us. That's that's why, because uh, that just, and I'm going to say to you, Trey, but I just wanted to kick in. Somebody, you know, we always talk about post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. We suffer from PTSD, but it's like, mm-hmm. it's not post. Mm-hmm. It's current. It's, it's current. C- <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, CTSD. Yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> like, it's yeah. an ongoing thing. Well, go ahead, Trey. I want to add on to what you said, fam. First, I think we do, um, even though we don't go through it 
physically, like the experience didn't actually happen. I think therefore I am. So we yeah. went through it. Yeah, you know yeah, absolutely. We went through it, and then the, the question is, how many times have we gone through it? Mm-hmm. Right? How many times have we gone through it? But I, I'm I'm gonna flip it though and say this. I think part of our problem is thinking like an American, right? Because we we have an expectation of a safe place, which to me really is a is a is a is a fallacy, right? Because as we go back in time and we look at, at at life, when has it ever really been safe? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like you, I mean, if we lived in nature, right? Yeah. Oh. Okay. okay. So we, we built we built communities what to to be collective power against whatever opposing forces, whether it be other humans animals so on and so forth so we haven't really been safe safe right Mm. but the european pushes a concept of a social construct of a level of safety and and, and us being us we aspire to the things that we were taught we're supposed to have as americans right um when i traveled abroad it was it was so ill to see how we look at life and how europeans look at life right um we have a false sense in, in all of us. Like, I don't care if we come from the hood. People in the hood have a false sense of entitlement. You know what I'm saying? Um, being an American. And I think that um, I, I think we can put that in, 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 in tears as far as what safety is. Right? So, so, real, with, so Will, real quick. Real, real quick. Because I, I think you're about to go this way. Should we then switch up as well as thinking men i'm not gonna just say black men but as thinking men right here us three just happen to be black should we switch the idea of safety with security because that that one that's an act that's an active thing that we're in charge of Mm -hmm. that we can take charge of because that that safety that thing what you just said really did speak to me if i was out in the woods what's safe i could scratch myself on a on a tree and die from an infection. The safety doesn't exist, but security is it's something that I can actively that. be partaking. Like that's man, you just open something that. up right there for me. You open something My up. Bad. You can't be Trump. Like what you're saying is, and I agree with son. Be secure, right? Knowing that you're secure in your environment, that for no reason should anyone interfere with you. Unless you've actually transgressed, you know what I'm saying that's a fact. And the concept as a black man that our presence is a transgression is what we go through, you know what I mean? right. and so that I guess threatens our security and threatens our safety right. because our presence is a transgression. Right. Like, well, oh, the, the, I think the illusion that you talk of comes in feeling like, well, if I remove myself from the dangerous environment in other in other words like if i'm if i'm out the, the woods if i get out if i don't hang out in the forest right then it's like i'm safe but here's the thing the, but here's the, the construct the construct like you said the safety like what's safe yeah what's safe the first right. thing you said was for who for who right so these 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 communities these constructs are erected for safety, I mean, their originality, or most of them, right? The safety's from us. Like they were created as safe havens from our communities. Mm-hmm. And then through integration, through whatever, we end up moving into these communities because of another illusion would be like good schools. So we say, yo, Mm. they've got great schools. So I'm going to move into this neighborhood. But again, same question would be asked. Great school for For who? who? Whose children? Right. Right. So I think that is, that's a sharp analysis shaping, you know, shifting that from safety to security. Security. You know what I mean? But also still acknowledging that mental trauma because I shouldn't fear bending the corner in my subdivision at 
2 o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday. There's nothing going on. But in my mind, anything everything. could happen <laughs> yeah. to me. Any and everything. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Because you realize when you turn the corner, you're at the the perception of you is in the hands of everybody else. You do not get to create, as a black man, more than a lot of other groups. You do not, and I mean historically, like at at for a certain point in time, we were glad that some of the heat was taken off of us with the Muslims, but they had to do something. Like somebody in that group had to do something terrible in order to take the heat off of the prevailing group that was seen as the bad guys. So your your the perception of you is in everybody else's hands. But here's so what's even would, better. Yeah. Yes, and at the same time, no one's hands. Because like you said, no one's thinking about that. Yeah. Really. Really. Right? Yeah. It's all in my head. It's all in your head, yeah. Based That's, on experience. It's not safe for you. Both yeah, it's not lived safe for and you observed, there. but... Right. It's it's in it's not those two little girls. They're just nah, playing. They're, they're not just paying playing. me no. Fun. And if you wave to them, they'll wave back. But it's in, <laughs> it's 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 something I have to carry, or mm-hmm. we that as a collective carry. have to carry until right. we let it until we put it down. Right, right. So right. let me pose this question to y'all. So, Trump, first let me ask you this: Where you live now, right? You go mm-hmm. outside, you're jogging, you see trees. Stuff like that. You got stuff like that around you? Trees yeah. and all that? Yeah. Okay. Got a little, got a nice little grass, yard. grass and all of that? Yes, sir. Okay. So what we call, what what do we call the hood? The what? The concrete what? Concrete jungle. Okay. But when you when you have trees and, and woods and all of that, then that's a what? A forest. So we just moved to where the hyenas and, and, and the lions and all that and the gorillas live. To where the bears and the wolves live, you know what I'm saying? That, that, do y'all see it like that? It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. So when yeah. we talk about safe, we just talking about the nature of the threat, right? So you 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 have a set of all right. This is dangerous over here. I know this environment, right? We move with the pretense to the to the forest, thinking it's safer, right? Or it should be. It's safer in the sense that. If you have children, the odds of somebody trying to take your kids' sneakers or their their, their phone, it, 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 you know, it, it, you don't have the odds that, uh, that much of being in the forest. Right. But and even that is shit that no one else has to think about. Right. Yeah. But exactly. The, but, yeah. Right. But the but the wolves now are the people governing your environment. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Because that's what's governing your environment. I mean, we got the wolves, right? And, and, and they're like, your lawn got to be a certain height, or we're, or we're, what we're, we're finding you. Yeah, yeah, out uh-huh. of your proper habitat, right? And so right. we stick out, right? And that's what we've been raised to know, right? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. as much as New York is supposed to be a melting pot, we're all from there, so we know you can go into different areas and it'd be an enclave of a specific F- ethnic group and you stand out right you stand out uh i go i go i go walk up and down was that uh roosevelt in queens i went from columbia mm-hmm. to Tibet, yep to, you know I mean somewhere else to, to bangladesh to the, fake, right? to the philippines everywhere right and so Right. Us, what we're talking about is, I think, what 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 it boils down to, right? There's always going to be a difference in people, right? But in search of the American dream, because that's what it is. As we as we try to progress economically, it's a safer environment, more secure environment, in search of the American dream, we get reminded every day with that we're, we're the American nightmare. Mm. Mm. So let me ask because let's um. Yeah, let's let's deep dive. If because I think even in my like, we all suffer from this kind of well, not not we all, but some of us suffer from this um, because 
I should know better, right? I should know better. And so there's the, I know better, but I have a responsibility to my loved ones and to the household that I have to hold down and put us in the best situations and scenarios possible, right? So you do what you think is best for their safety. But sometimes that's a compromise of your own peace of mind as a black man. Absolutely. Right? So where I'm comfortable, I mean, listen, you know, I lived on 23rd and Cecil B. Moore for 10 years. So um, when everyone was leaving <laughs> the environment, I doubled down. I went into a worse, I grew up in a worse, you know what I mean? Like the habitat that I inhabited as an, a grown man was much more active than even the one I grew up in. So Philly was I doubled no down joke. in the hood. And, <laughs> Philly you know, is no listen, joke. Without incident, without mm-hmm. incident, I'm, you know, stupid shit happens all around. But my experience, nobody troubled me. No one bothered me. I didn't bother anybody. It was all good. You know, you would you would have to deal with stuff uh, with your properties and things of that nature. But no one ever laid a hand on me. So I cannot, you know what I mean? I don't have a narrative of like, they did me dirty in the hood. Well, um, that, that, but, that, prob- that probably comes, though, from the navigation that you learned in Brooklyn and the people that you hung with and the examples that was set. So you going to a another jungle, just in a different part of the world, the navigation is still the same. Oh, it's easy. So if you looked at it, it's a situation where you're going, you know what? If this was Brooklyn, I know that corner is about that life. So it's easy. I'm going to avoid that type of thing. When you're in a community that you're in now in the greater Atlanta, Georgia area, or for me in the greater Richmond area, the it's not vine to vine. It's not follow the river to go to get to wherever. It's it's a whole different joint. It's I've never had to deal with a food desert before. Mm. I didn't even know what it was mm. until I moved down to Virginia. And it's like, and it's not even the hood. I've never even lived in a hood. Yeah. Always had expel- a backyard. Can you and, expel on a food desert? So a food desert is, is uh, uh, I want to say de- uh, delineated, or it's an area that doesn't have a serviceable um, source of produce. So literally, if, if you have to go a certain distance to get fresh produce or quality groceries, that area can be considered a food desert. And it's not dictated by car. It's dictated by public transportation and walking distance. Correct. Or, or so in other if words- you're, If your poorest can't get to fresh food in a reasonable distance, if they got to walk an hour, which is only three miles, if they got to walk a mile and a half to get fresh produce, where you live can be considered a food desert. Listen, and those brother, are serious. When you're talking, you talking about folks doing their proper grocery shopping at Dollar General. Yeah, that's like, not the way. And that's, I live in a, and I, so right now I live, <laughs> real shit. right now I live in a food desert and, my, right. and I got a big backyard. I got a nice front yard, in it, but the closest supermarket is about two miles away. And like you can't sit there and get anything done in a while. Okay, you can't I go love, get bananas and 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 apples and. I love and, where you're going because this because this because this is this is this is where I wanted to go, because in America, right, and like I was saying, where I was fooled, and I think where most of us get tricked, especially those of us who got a little education and you know what I mean, a little a little decent salary and decide that we want to, you know what I mean? Be upward mobile, (laughs) right? Is Trey touched on that. We take on this label of American. You say, well, I'm an American. I should be able to live where I want to live. And I'm going to live where I want to live. Now I'm going through, Another transition 
Flizzy, like we're about to move again. Oh, I'm aware. Congratulations. Okay, well, I know you know everything. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> congratulations. Big. But the sacrifice to get closer to the boys' school. That was what I was I, I literally asked the wife about that. I was like, yo, I wonder if that was a part of their move. Yeah. The sacrifice like it wouldn't have made sense. Like the sacrifice. Now, listen, I'm five minutes away from Sprouts, which is like my favorite store. Mm. I'm about 10 minutes from Whole Foods. Um, I got another like nature's corner, another little um, you know, shop to get your little, you know what I mean, health. Your new spot? Or where you nah, at? the old spots where I'm at now, where I'm at currently. Okay. Um, I can run there. You know what I mean? I just joined my gym. Like I'm all set up. You set up. <laughs> set up. And I'm Grown good man money. Life. I'm good money out here. Yeah. You know what I mean? But and even if I entertain pulling little man out of his school and sending him to the school around the corner, which is like one of the best schools in the county. But it's like 90 plus white. And so is that the best environment for him? Some would say yes. I want to keep I'm not sure, right? So and that's when we get into like what's what's really best for you. What's, what's really good. Best, you know yeah. what I mean? And yeah. I want to land that I'm sending us into a food desert. To be closer to the school and to have like our house with, you know what I mean? Like we'll have our house, new construction, da, da, da. I don't want to, but so it's like, but of course now our population goes up. Now we're going from like 20% to 50, 50 and change us. And then all the amenities come down, decrease access, and to, so access to resources. Come is down. the trick is the trick for those small percentages of us who have the means and we skate from the neighborhoods and we all scatter. I can take our entire friend group. None of them are, none of us are neighbors. If I take um, your brothers, Floyd, that I went to school with, Mm -hmm. who are your childhood friends that I went to college with and they became my partners. None of us live within what of each other. Most of us don't live in the same state. Right. We're all in different suburbs, in different locales. If I take At the most, it'll be two that'll be within a day visit. So you got Seth and Dave, you got Brendan and Everett. Other and than so that, everybody is state, state, state. How does that dynamic change from a from a power center point, from a voting point, from a school board point, from a um, resources point. If I took my 12 to 15 member crew from Temple University and we all said, yo, we move into Wilmington, Delaware. And we're gonna be 15 households within a two mile radius and send our kids to the same school and make sure that the amenities that we seek come to the hood. Maybe, you know what I'm saying, um, your son, we pull together. Your son runs the coffee shop. So is he? Yeah, he makes beats on the side, but he runs the coffee shop. So now we mm -hmm. got a coffee shop. Mm -hmm. What stops us from making those type of moves and is it the illusion or the um what's the word you said um Trey you said uh entitlement of being an American citizen so it's like I don't have to do all of that I'm American I'll just go move in a neighborhood that has it well I think it's this I think it's well speaking of what you just said one you said you're moving from an environment that provided certain amenities, right, to another environment that's providing better education, right? 
right? It would be closer to the education, right? For your son, right? All right, so what are we looking at? We're looking at what's our priorities, right? And that's based on our culture or, or what you want to see. The culture. culture. The, yeah, right? Not ours. The so, culture. So, but what you're talking about as far as living in an environment, see, we're all people, right? Definitive Virgo, that could be, become our people. We could build, right? We all build. We all communicate. Just being people don't make us a people. There you go. Right? Yeah. And and not being a people is because we, we we can all agree on certain things, but we can't collectively come together to say, these are the things that are going to make us a people. And we're going to hold each other accountable for these things so we can move collectively. It's a right for us to socialize together. We do a social thing well, right? We enjoy the social thing together. But Black people, there's an old adage that you shouldn't do business with family, right? Shouldn't do business with your friends. You're going to mess up your family. You're going to mess up your friends, right? And this mentality keeps us from wanting to build together. Right? And we're the only ones that follow that credo. Yeah, and that's what I, that's what I was going to add on to. And I was going to say, because you talked about the uh, subsects that are based on really culture, but ethnicity, whatever you want to call it, right? So, you know, if you talk about Astoria, you're talking about, uh, you know, even like Brooklyn, Brighton Beach, Sheepshead Bay, talking about all of these subsects of even European immigrants who even in their being European are still like, no, I'm Eastern European. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm, I'm Russian. I'm you know, from the Asian side, it was like, I'm Cambodian. I'm, there's a tribe. There's, They're claiming their tribes. The first thing they do is gather in one place and they start to bring their cultural amenities into that place. So, and you know, I'm a first generation um, Caribbean. So this may not directly apply to me, but I'm, I'm black. I'm here. I was born here. So I, I don't bang like, I bang like, you know what I mean? We black. So, but I recognize that. And by the second generation, we, we, we give up our culture too. You know what I mean? Like I'm from Brooklyn. Like my, my nephew, my nieces, they, no one's Beijing. They're, they're American. So, you know what I mean? It becomes one thing that, that easy. But. Got uh, uprooted. So like, how are you going to. Your culture is gonna be continuous when, I'm a, I'm a, but where's where's that 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 feeds it? And so I guess the crux of what I'm getting at is, and I know how and why, of course, but for the sake of conversation and having folks following along with us, and just to get your thoughts on that, where's the culture? Okay, now I'm a culture is peer pressure from dead people. I just saw that on social media. Hmm. I also watched. Th I watched This Is Us because every I think every man needs a good cry, and I love that show. There's a Spanish character on that show that had to deal with Miguel. Oh, you know, okay. come on, you know, wife. I'm yet. just saying, you know, hey, for the people that don't, <laughs> for the people that missed out on the last six years of amazing day. television writing, the character Miguel had a conversation with his father because Miguel had become successful. Not unlike you, Trump, college educated, did his thing. Came home and told his mom, mom, I'm going to get you somebody to help around the house. The father was like, yo, don't come here. He said it in Spanish. He said, yo, listen, don't come around here flashing your money and doing all this like you better. And, and Miguel looked at his pops and it, because he was talking going back and forth between English and Spanish. They made sure they wrote that in. You're watching him scat, straddle the line between what his parents brought him to America for. And his original culture, the peer pressure of dead people, right? And he said, why am I in America? I didn't ask to come here. You brought me here. You made me learn English. You sent me to these schools. You made me learn to do this so I could have a better life. And I got it. And now you're giving me crap for it. What do you want? Mm. I think that people that were, I think that, and all of this, I think, begins with our parents. The reason why we as brothers didn't stay connected is because of the culture of 
our people, whether it's Caribbean, me, I am American as far back as I can go on my dad's side. So I'm cotton and tobacco under these nails. As far back as we can all remember, even in the Caribbean, the culture of our people was survival, not success. So when you come to America, you're still taught your language. You're, you're taught to speak that language of um, English. That's your first language. That's the only language you're taught to learn in an Amer- American educational system, so that you could become an employee, which is what the American way is. And the other cultures that we're talking about, Europeans, um, most most stereotypically, I'm doing all of this. Most Asian cultures, when they come here, they come here and they're going, no, 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 no. We're here to take advantage and succeed not survive and fit in. New York was never a melting pot. It's all salad. Everything is in the same bowl, but lettuce is always lettuce. Tomatoes is always tomatoes. It's never, it's not a soup where everything all of a sudden becomes something. No, it's, it's, it's a salad. It's in the bowl. It's what makes New York amazing. But ain't nobody, like you said, Brighton Beach, uh, for a certain point in time, Hollis, there's certain areas in Queens where it's mainly Trinidadians or Guyanese or it's it's that's just that's just what it is. But the reason why those those groups and cultures stick together is because that's the mindset from Jump Street. It's not survive. Let me push. Let me push. Let me let me let me push back and add on. And then I want to get your thoughts on this tray simply, though, because we're talking about safety and security. And I think that one of the main pillars of those cultures staying connected when they come here is safety and security. There is safety and security in the culture. So again, we go back to what is our culture? And is there any tying our lack of safety to To our lack of culture? Mm. So I want to get into, I want to expound on what you said about the Miguel situation, right? I was talking to Tron the other day. See, that's what I called the um, the Lambert, the sheepish lion complex, right? Mm. I don't know if you remember that. Uh, <clears throat> I think it was a Warner Brothers cartoon, but Lambert was a lion, but he got lost as a cub and he was raised by sheep, right? So he has this oxymoronic personality going on, right? And so when you talk about culture, and now we're going to talk about in, in, in regards to the Miguel character in the migration, right? And that's an important part. The migration, right? He's still put in a position where he's being raised in an environment, his friends, I mean, everything outside of his house, right? Unless he lives in an enclave of nothing of, of but wherever they came from, right? He's still being raised in a different culture mm-hmm. he's not being raised in the culture that his parents came from now their desire what you said is a uh, culture is what the the peer pressure dead people? yeah peer pressure from dead peer people. pressure of dead people i agree and disagree i think that there are practical things to a culture and then there are things that become dogma i think the dogma is the part that is problematic Right. Mm-hmm. Because it's like that it was the, the lottery where the town no longer understood why they held a lottery. But at the end, whoever lost the lottery would get stoned to death. But see, they no longer understand why this practice started to begin with. Right. First place. right. And so it's a lot of what we do that can be some things should be static. Some things should be dynamic it's a, it's a based on circumstance and all that. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's not like that. Everything is rigid. And this is where migrating and then experiencing different things becomes problematic with the previous generation. Right. But when it comes to us. That's not applicable. Because we're not immigrants. So when you say our mindset is survival is because our condition was survival. Mm-hmm. See, every other ethnic group had a choice. Had I mean, choice. say for you don't want to talk about the indigenous servants with the Irish and so on and so forth, Shanghai people, whatever you, you know what I mean, uh, 
but for the most part, most of the Chinese, the, the Irish, the Italians, now what was going on in the environment, potato famine, so on and forth, so forth, influenced their decision. But it was still a choice to get on that boat, right? It was still a choice to come here. With us, we didn't have a choice. And that lack of choice means that we never really had a culture. Right. Mm -hmm. Because what was the what was the point of, of making sure you had different slaves from different tribes so they couldn't speak? They were never culturally connected anywhere. Right. So the connection is was forced by the oppression. Right. But the programming has always been for the European to be the standard. And as the standard, we aspire to be the standard. Right. And as we aspire to be the standard, we become more American, right? And so we've never had a situation, really, when we talk about the Tulsas and the Rosewoods, and we talk about these environments, the uh, Weeksvilles, we lived amongst each other out of force because they said, you can't live with us. You can't be with us. And that has always been something that I think psych psychologically, and then it became genetic has been a big part of our problem is the desire to be accepted by the status quo, by the largest, by the macro economy, the, mac, the macro, macrocosm. So that's interesting because um, out of force and I think in many ways, again, back to that word safety when we came out of slavery, we created these neighborhoods and we, and we thrived. And they thrived. weren't safe. Hmm? <laughs> and we weren't, weren't, safe. We weren't Yeah, well, we weren't safe because, you know, it was military, you know, we, you know, again, well, that's the theme of the, um, <laughs> that's the theme of the whole show, right? But um, we thrived. Um, and then there was push for what was separate but equal. The original push was we want better resources. It became we want to be able to do what y'all do with you somewhere along the line. That's another show, right? But originally it was like we want better schools too. Right. Then it became... Well, we we just want to go to your school. We want to go to your school. Right? And so that entry into being able to go to their school and live in their neighborhood started or was part of a massive defunding of our resources and our neighborhoods because then it became, well... If you're able to cross these things off, then you just go live where it's better. And where it's better is default American because whiteness is default American. Mm -hmm. American in the dictionary is white. Not literally, y'all, but because people get literal. But <laughs> default, you know what I mean? And so... It's like if you can jump these hoops, if you can cross these thresholds, you get to be American and you leave that culture, quote unquote, or you bring that culture. You bring that culture, those pieces of the culture that we like, you bring it into the larger melting pot and you just become American. But our immigrant counterparts somehow gain that access. I mean, Asian men and Asian women, study just came out right, are the only individuals who out earn the white man in this country. They don't, as a whole, obviously there's individuals within anything. As a whole, they don't relinquish their culture. but they have access. Us being 
or more, I guess, appropriately, um, you guys as foundational black Americans. There's a, there's something that has to be relinquished to access mm-hmm. that American dream. So you just call me a foundational black American? <laughs> Yo. By I definition, I not by mindset. Maybe not by mindset. I'm just I'm making the distinction FBA. for the purposes. Black American, nah. You know what I mean? A, F- an American descendant of slavery, an Ados person. You know what right. I'm saying? It's right. like maybe not in mentality and in, in, in ways and action, but I'm just saying the definition of what they define that to be. But I don't want to keep saying we, 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 because right. you know what I mean? my yeah, mom yeah, yeah. is off the boat and my dad. Right. So, and so, so, so as one of those FBAs, right there, <laughs> what I'm going to do is, there, Will, huh? I'm going to get you a flag, man. <laughs> oh, no, I got my, I got my Bayesian flag somewhere around No, there. I'm going to get you an FBA flag. Oh, I'm, I need an FBA flag. <laughs> All right. So, um. So what I want to do is, because it, when it comes to this, you're probably going to be more on the immigrant side culturally of what I'm going to explain than a lot of us are. So we used Asians. Asians seems to be the best example to use as a whole stereotypically. I'm going to go ahead and say that because the study just showed what it showed. Um, from the limited and uneducated amount of Asians that I know, just not, I'm literally pulling this out of my cheeks. The, it seems as though the importance um, of their contributions is placed on not just higher education, but the highest levels of education and a strong, strong connection to entrepreneurship. So when you think about Asians, stereotypically, they're either top of the class or sell into your ass. Whereas you wouldn't sit there and say, those are the workers of America. Those are the employees of the USA. You wouldn't classify the group stereotypically of Asians as workers. They are the tip top of whatever. And I'm speaking stereotypically. This is what you think of when you think of Asians. You're they're either especially coming from New York, they're either in your hood selling you what you need to get by or they are uh, uh, creating the tech or in the healthcare field or in the higher tiers. This isn't just, oh, I'm going to get my master's. No, this is doctorates and and you hear about tiger moms when you hear about culture and you hear about you hear about all of these things when it when you hear about the stereotypical culture of Asians. And then when you look at that study, you go, that's what it bared out to. And see, my bad, go back to what what, um, I was saying earlier. And practically, that's the positive effect of peer pressure of dead people, right? Because they're they're succeeding as far as whatever. There's a bar. There's a bar. There's a bar. See, with them, I read Culturally. I read an article specifically about the Chinese a few years ago, right? And it was actually dealing with the hemispheres of the brain. And it said, like, most Asian cultures, when it comes to the hemispheres of the brain, are balanced. So then it was getting into how the Chinese, how they move, why this is, or how how this is, is because of how they think. Like, when presented with a problem, they don't ask, they don't think about why this is happening. They just say, okay, this is a solution. So I was thinking about like, uh, you know, again, aspiring to be like the European, how we choose to open restaurants typically. And I'm just saying this to Toronto another day. Now, what happens is like West Indians will come and they will open their restaurants too, like little patty shop, so on and so forth. But now that is they've been here generationally, and they're trying to get the sit down spots. See, the Chinese don't care about that. I don't care about the she she foo foo. I don't care about the pomp and circumstance. Low maintenance. I'm low going overhead. To the money. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I don't care well, about. Also, I mean, they're selling to us. So the hygiene and the. I mean, well, you know. I, uh... yeah, but I mean, even if you, if, you go, <laughs> if, even if you go to Chinatown, though, 
Facts, facts, like facts. even their nicest restaurants aren't like, you know, if you go to a, what a so called four star five star restaurant, they don't. It's not they they're they're about the goal, and then I uh, I work with a I work with a young lady, she's Chinese, and she you know she gave me some insight. One, she was at the Black Dudes, she grew up in Queens, so she got kicked out the house of fifteen for or sixteen for dealing with the black guy. Right, that's one. So then she had two black babies, right? But she went and got a degree. She get money, and um, she told me that you know how they do it is this. They double down. That's the three of us here. Say we're brothers, right? Say we're brothers and cousins. Um, trauma is the is the one that shows the most promise. Now, trauma is our cousin, me and your brothers, right? They're not investing in us. Our parents are going to invest in trauma. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna, they're going to invest in trauma because he's the one that's going to bring it back, right? Mm-hmm. He's going to want to be partic- uh, most likely the one to be able to employ us, right? To mm-hmm. give us opportunity, right? And see, and that's, how they're, that's how I know Chinese people just speaking to her, just reading what I read. That's how their culture functions. Like I'm going, I'm going to get it right. So, and we, I mean, we don't so, have that. Look, yeah, look, we don't have so, that level of responsibility to to ourselves. Mm-hmm. It's li- it's a it's a me thing. I got to get out, and I got to do what I got to do. And what happens, and that also is going to wind up, which is what we see in Chicago, what we see with in, in, in hip hop, with trail and everything like that. It's no longer, yo, we out the hood. Yo, yo, if you do this, you can get you we can be can be out of here. It creates this underlying jealousy, this underlying um uh fear of abandonment when somebody does make it. So why why would I invest in uh 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 my fan? Because once he leaves, he gone, he ain't coming back for me. And it's it winds up being a self-fulfilling prophecy because the ones that still have that heart that still bring us with them, the tendency seems to be now to do them dirty or to not secure that bag so that we can all continue to win. So you got dudes in crews and in in entourages that are messing it up. The fact that LeBron and his crew is the exception and not the rule proves your concept. I think we have a Highlander mentality. Yes, there can be only one. It can be only one. Mm. Yeah. It, and it's, well, what does so three sixty? So, so you're not even safe in your crew. We're not even safe in our crew. Three sixty to the top of the conversation, though. The same. I mean, the fear, because that's what it is at the end mm-hmm. of the day. The fear that I exhibited on my jog. How does that play into all of this? Well, it, yeah. because 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 that fear is that fear is also intergenerational. So then you go back to the to, to the question, right? What's ours? Right? Mm. Because the hood is not ours. Right? We live in the hoods, but how much property do we own there? Right? It's not ours, right? So we feed, we got the Chinese restaurants, we got the bodega, we got ah uh, ah, uh, we got the Arab dudes. Typically they don't live right in our hood. So we feed them and they tax dollars go somewhere else. Then we move like Trump and his nice, his nice uh uh development, right? But that's not ours either, right? And then so we go back to we left ours, or we didn't want ours to begin with. So how do we determine how do we come to a point where not only do we want ours conceptually, but we put energy into creating ours? And that's it right there. That's, that's it right the, that's there. The, I mean, that's the wrap-up right for the conversation now is, is that, and I guess this is where we separate what you said, um, Trey, playing along the theme of every brother ain't a brother and all skin folk and kin folk and everything that we know to be true, right? And so we, when we talk about um, culture, we talk about blackness, and we talk about, yo, we're all African or X, Y, Z. Is it important to you to have ours is ours oh, an important it's, part of blackness. It's, and it's, is it's there the separation 
between those of us who think it's important for us to have something of our own and for those of us who say, well, my goal is to have a piece of theirs to be, or you, to their to no, not be theirs. You know, some of the, some people with really good intentions have this kind of, you know, that harmony kind of like we're all going to be able to share in this one thing. And my goal is that we don't even have to have these conversations anymore because I should be able to go and come as I please and not have any fear of anything because it's all ours. Allow that. Allow it. I, I think that ultimately you have to allow both, but choose to support one or the other. You cannot support both. So being a black entrepreneur, I tell people this all the time. And I started telling white people this when I'm dealing with them in, in capacities because I'm trying to build my business. I'm a black business. However, I am not a business for blacks. It is more important for me to maintain a black business than it is for me to just worry about servicing a particular consumer because ultimately I am a business. So now as a customer, I have to actively and purposely say, I am going to support mine. I don't want uh, to share with them any particular space. I want to gather their resources the way they gather mine and then decide to spread it back among ours. So if somebody decides that they're going to succeed and up and leave, you got to allow that. I'm just not going to support it. I'm going to go, yo, that's pretty dope. But there's somebody over here that's doing such and such, and I may not be able to do as much as I would if I were to go to a, a, a Dollar General or to a, a to an Asian hair salon or to whatever, but I'm going to support mine. So that's what we have to begin to do. So perfect example. If I'm doing, if I'm doing, if I go to a pop up or a farmer's market, we're not the organizers of every farmer's market I do. But every time I come back, I'm buying black owned sneakers. I'm wearing black owned hat. I make my own jewelry. I got my own shirt. This candle right here is black owned. I'm on a black run podcast. The soap I washed with when I said I'm getting podcast fly was a black owned company. So you have to sit there and you have to go, look, I'm allowing. For people to, you can buy whatever you want to buy, but I'm going to be the reason why a black company succeeds because I'm not afraid to go out and make granola as a black man, not traditionally considered a black food. I'm going to go out here and be a black granola company and I'm going to get that money from whoever, whatever community or culture decides to support me. And then I'm going to take that money and recycle it in where I do. So you got to allow it. I got to sit there and go, yo, I, I get that everybody's not going to be a LeBron that goes to the league. I said, but I'm going to be a LeBron. And here's another thing, because I know you're probably going to want to shoot for the hour. Here's one thing that I want us no, to begin. Talk, talk, talk. Here's talk. one thing that I really want us to begin to come to grips with. And because we didn't, we, Trump, we literally did the business thing and decided, whoa, this is not going to work because some of us want to go in a direction. And we decided, yo, the friendship was more important. Here's why mm. we got to allow for that as well. Because 95 is when me and you met. 95, 96 is when we met. 98, 99 is when we had Space Entertainment. And I, I had to take a different route. When we look at that group, some of us went the route to go and have a piece of what they have. And I'm right here still on the same shit I was on in 98. I want mine. I want ours. We can do this. So we made the right decision back then because I'm still cool with you. I'm still cool with all of my brothers. And I allowed them to do what they did. And they are allowing me to do what I'm doing now. We got to allow it. Here's what, here, this is all leading to this one thing. We have to begin to separate what's relative from what's family. Family, we choose. Relative is just similar. Indeed. 
we relate relatively we're, we're similar yeah so there's a similarity i have to my parents there's a similarity that i have to some cousins but my parents are family because i choose to interact with them now i choose to interact with them now so we're still family i choose to interact with my brothers we're still family but i also just have relatives as well in my travels through life mom you've become family you were at my wedding you understand what I'm saying? I was in the handful of people that have insight into what you're into the developments into your daily life. I'm in that handful with family now. I have family that I communicate with that I've only known for the past 10, 12 years. Like family. Right. Kidney, kidney transplant type shit. So we have to begin to sit there and go, no, 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 no. Let's let's reset because now you can create a more beneficial culture if you go, there's relative. And there's family. Family will do some shit for you that your relatives won't. I like that. I like that. So, well, Trey, let me answer your question. But I'm going to answer your question. Yeah. You said, um, all right, so for me, it's yes, I want it, but I want it in how I define blackness and exactly. stop, stop exactly. broad stroking blackness, right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, I want to build on, I want to build on something you said, and I want to ask you a question. Um, Definitive verbal. I'm gonna ask you this question. Um, when you say black business, right? That's another thing I think we do blindly. Oh, I was gonna get. That's where I was going. We're yeah, good. like we, I, we, I, I was. I'm going there in the same space you're going in terms of blackness. But go ahead. Yeah, what I'm going there is is okay. You can have a black business, but is your business black? Right. It's yeah. It's, yeah, it's two. It so, definitely is two separate. Things. Like. We have these black, we have all these, you know, these rappers, whatever, whatever. But in feeding them, do they feed us? Is it, cycl right. is it a cyclical relationship? Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And we have to, I think, ultimately, we have to hold businesses owned by black people accountable. Like, you can't have our dollar if it's not going to be cultural. You know what I'm saying? You're not mm -hmm. going to come back and invest in something. And then hold them to a greater standard of, instead of doing it individually, y'all have to put in a pot collectively to do for the community, right? So I had a conversation. A I had a conversation with some brothers, and I, um, just to jump in, and I was saying in the conversation like, "Yo, we need our own." You know, we talk about music. I was like, "We need our own streaming platforms." You know, X Y Z. I'm having this conversation, and one of the brothers said, "Well, we got one. Titles sure black on." Oh. I said, "Title's not a black streaming company." Yeah, no. Nah. And he was like, "Yeah, yeah, it is. It's black owned." I'm like, "Well, the majority owner well, at the time, because that's not even the case anymore. But at the time, the majority, you know, owner was a black man." I'm like, that in and of itself, to me, doesn't qualify it as a black business. Indeed. So. Exactly what you're saying. Like, are you operating? And so we getting we're getting back to blackness culture. What defines okay? Because yeah. we're saying every every black business ain't a black business, a black or every black owned business isn't a black business. But go ahead, Trey. Continue. What is a you know what is a black business though? But go ahead, Trey. Well, I, I, that's how I would want. A black business to work but i also want to say this and this is going to our conditioning here right as as uh, uh descendants of the african diaspora right going to our conditioning here why is it that this is the question i want to pose why is it business having difficulties threatens a friendship mm. right people like other cultures, they do business, they get into arguments with family, uh, and they go back to doing go business. Go back to business. You got to go to work. We got to go work. to work. We go back to doing business. They don't dissolve mm -hmm. it. Whatever. They, somebody makes mistakes. It's like we hold ourselves to a standard of infallibility when it comes to doing stuff together. And see, this is going back to not having a culture, mm -hmm. right? Right. Because how, how do you work, how do you work through things if you've never okay. seen it work through? Right, because we don't have any standard in which we're subscribing to. 
Right, right. Everybody right. has their own individual ideology, mm-hmm. right? And so we we don't sit down and collectively, well, before we go do stuff together, say, boom, well, this is how I see business. Right. This is how I see. And see, for us, I just, just speaking about knowing trauma, speaking to you, it would be that one of the things I think we do wrong is, again, it goes back to doing business like them, right? And so we have black businesses with white face, right? It's like what the, I think Puffy said it. I, I I haven't confirmed the quote, but when the um one of the make of the band dudes was on um with Doggy Diamonds, uh, I think he responded and said, "I just did what the white man has been doing for a long time, or something like that." I think yeah. white man, right? You know what I mean, well, so, yeah. So I wonder if he this, really said that. Well, this yeah. is this is this this is blackface. Right. Mm-hmm. As business. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like you're a black face, but you're but he learned you're, he learned to do business from Clive Davis. So that right. Was, right. So the way you do sense. business though is European, right? And us lacking a culture, well, that goes back to what I was saying about the Chinese. We go to these different ethnic groups, they're doing business based on culture because culture is commerce, right? And this is what we're lacking. Right. So when we come together and we do anything, if we don't have a culture, it's hard to keep that bond. Right. right. And right. so even as family, as the people that we we take on that's not our blood, but we take them on as family, do we even establish that with them outside of the, the, the similarities that just happened naturally and right. that made us bond? So, or do we right. sit down and, and, and lay that out? And say, boom! But this is who we're going to be together, right? So, but, but let me push. Let me push back a little bit because, and I guess this is the question moving forward. Because we say, like, we do not have a culture. Um, you know, we are all stripped of our cultures, either you know when they found us here or when they brought us here, and the mixing of all of these different peoples who had skin color in common, but not necessarily customs and ways of knowing in common creates, you know, what is the African diaspora, but not necessarily a culture. And still in all, I can walk into your household. I can walk into your household. I can walk into my Nigerian partner's household. I can go deep South Mississippi and walk in a household and they're all the same households. They're doing things that I'm mm-hmm. very familiar with. Mm-hmm. So we have mm-hmm. a common culture. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. think- We have common practices, yeah. yeah. And practices yeah. is part of culture. Yeah. But I think that, again, that signing on to being American right. You're is a changing further the tribe. stripping yeah, the tribe is of right. those practices. And, yeah. and, and even we don't focus on our commonalities. So it's hard to create a culture when we're always starting with what makes us different. What makes us different. We focus right. on our differences more than our likenesses. And right. I think that the rugged individualism that is the American dream that says you by yourself can do all of these great things if you X, Y, Z, you. And we're always looking at like, well, how can I come up? I'm going to get it. So I'm looking at, I'm, I'm, I'm getting my bag. Fuck everything. Fuck everybody else. I'm going to get it. So I'm if a, you can't do nothing for me, you know, like, and then it becomes culture because what is culture now, right? Like, if you ain't talking money, get the fuck out of my face. If it ain't about, if it ain't, you know what I mean? Like, it becomes culture. So, so I'm a, I'm at a, this point, are we in a space where we're saying, like, the first step in building this culture is saying, like, down the we old don't shit. have one, right? Like and create a new. Build and destroy. Like take the destroy pieces. And build. We got take the piece. Well, first, and and I, being not religious is easy for me because I can say just get back to them. With everything that's theirs mentally, 
and and and, and especially spiritually, give back everything that's theirs. Start from scratch. It's only two thousand years or fifteen hundred years old anyway. In in the course of our in the course of human history, it ain't nothing. The blink of an eye to start from scratch. But here's what I'm gonna do, because like I said, we have to allow for people to want to stay, because that's what culture is. That's what tribes are. Everybody starts from one spot and then somebody makes a decision. They, they change the practice is what you were saying. And then, and then it branches off. So the songs are different going forward. The foods are different going forward. The forms of art are different going forward. The colors it, that you put in your wardrobe that denote uh, rank and value and, and ancestry become different. But it all comes from one central thing. So we have to allow. We got to allow for the culture of black Americans and then we have to allow for the culture of the new African-American or whatever the heck is going to wind up being. I don't prescribe to no, no labels, but here, here's what I've decided to do. Cause like I said, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm at a point now where my product has gone past the proof of concept stage. I'm still working out of my house. So I said, okay, it's time for me to get rid of that New York hustle mentality and file my papers so that I can make money. So I could do what I'm supposed to do so that if I want to get into a, into a venue, nobody can tell me no based on the game that was set up because I'm in America. Gotta I am in. fully 100%. I call it white people legit when it comes mm-hmm. to my business, right? So now I'm, at a, now I'm at a spot where, sheesh, I'm ordering stuff in bulk now. But I got a house. I'm living in my house. Like I can't. The city that I live in, Hopewell, Virginia. They got a downtown redevelopment thing that they're trying to get put on. This lady is a white lady too. Beautiful, beautiful person, man. Heather Lynn, she's been amazing with, she can see that I got a good product that's past proof of concept. And she's like, well, hey, if you're looking to get a brick and mortar, come downtown and come check out the buildings. And I go and I check out the buildings. And then she's like, hey, we have programs for small businesses. I... I'm in taking college courses now, Zoom meetings. I'm in two of them at a time to further my education and get the information I need and find out about the resources that exist for what I'm doing individually. She announces a pitch competition for a chance to win a part of 30K towards your the brick and mortar. Halfway through, my blackness kicked in. I said... I'm switching my pitch from me getting the money to further my granola business to going, I got family that is in the exact same position in business that I'm in. We all need the same thing. I'm going to open up a commercial kitchen for all of us to have a spot to develop our businesses so that instead of me worrying about myself getting a brick and mortar, all of us can develop and create an entire region to where now, if you want a brick and mortar come through here, this is where you get it. My entire, my, and that to me is that's, that's what makes what I'm doing a black business. The majority of my customers are white. But it's a black business because at the end of the day, like Will said, those resources are going to wind up going to the building of other black businesses. If you're not reinvesting back in the quote unquote community, I allow you're not it. a black business. That's, I, but the yeah. whole thing is I allow those businesses to exist. Everyone has to exist. not going to keep me from existing. Everyone has to exist. Everyone has to exist. And I had to go through. Uh, it was a mini Shark Tank. I just did it on. Let me look at my calendar. I just did it on the eleventh. I did my pitch. I was, and the whole thing was they had a full day. I said I want the first slot. I did eight o'clock. I'm there before they sitting up, before they set up the whiteboard. I handed out my papers. I gave my speech. They gave me the feedback, and it was like we didn't really think that there was going to be any issue with you getting through to the finals, just because of the premise. So I could have sat there and just freestyled it if I wanted to, just explaining my premise. And it was like, there's no way that we're not going to allow you to go to the finals and and get your shot at this money. So when it comes to what I'm doing and how it's like, you know what, I'm not as successful as I probably want to be. That's for individual. That's, that's an individual thing. 
You know, I'm not, I'm not on IG enough. I'm not putting my money into ads, you know, because I'm in the matrix. I'm in the damn system. I know how it's going to work. I know I'm only getting 10% of the reach and I know I'm only, it's, it's, that's, that's business. That's anybody. But when it comes to what I have in store, I don't care if I'm not the first millionaire that comes out of that kitchen. I have to create one. I have to create one. That's the collective told, work and responsibility. That's, I that's have all to that create is. a millionaire. I yeah. don't care. Like when I tell you, try my ego's gone. My ego is gone. I, I have to create a millionaire. And I told myself there's certain goals. I had to create a millionaire. And two, I have to meet that mayor of Hopewell. Now, with the connections and the network that I have, it's not a big city. I could say, hey, Heather, like, say, you, you know, know I see him in mayor? Starbucks, man. Hold on. Yeah, I could see him in Starbucks. But I said, no, 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 no. When I say I want to meet the mayor of Hopewell, I want it to be in recognition of what I'm doing. Facts. He, he, you want him to meet you. Bingo. That's what you mean. <laughs> but I said it, but I'm just saying what I said. I said, I, I yeah. want to meet the mayor of Hopewell. No, I want the mayor of Hopewell to say, hey, can you set me up with, with Floyd? Can you set me up with Uncle Flizzy? Can you set me up with the definitive Virgo? I pass by the thing all the time. That block is looking crazy. You know what I'm saying? So it's one of those things where out of my lack of, because I'm, I'm going to tell you straight up and down, I didn't get the support I needed from my relatives. My, mm. my parents is always about that life. <laughs> and, and, my, and I'm lucky. My parents and my, my, and my brothers, my two relative brothers, I catch them wearing my shirts all the time. So I've always had that. But if you think that your relatives, your your 15 cousins, your 13 aunts, your four uncles is going to be enough to sustain your business. You are sorely mistaken. Get out of that mindset and let them find you the same way strangers do. It'll benefit you more. Get out of that mindset because you'll get your heart broke. And that's you should thing. get your heart broken. It's business. But, but that's not our, but that, I mean, you know, that's not our culture. We don't have a culture of- And that's why you got to, repl- and so for us, it's like, okay, listen, other cultures have- generations of building up that path we don't right. so i exactly. said you know what Continuity. so you know what when it comes to me and my family i know how it would have benefited me i know how at 44 years old i'd be further along if my parents didn't push hey you need to apply for city jobs so i had to fake like that's what i knew i wanted to do i didn't want to do that shit from dump shit i was selling candy in high school because i wanted to be an entrepreneur you know what I'm saying? But I was scared of the streets, so I never switched to drugs. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was scared yeah. of the streets. I wasn't that dude. So now it's like, nah, my kids don't got to worry about that. So you know look, what? But even I'm look at a- that. Look at your options, though. Yeah. From, from an candy entrepreneurial or standpoint, candy, look at candy your, or look drugs. What you was, well, look, the only thing you could graduate to would have been. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. they're not giving me the licenses back then, and I don't have the money for down payments for this. The internet opened up the entire world, and the pandemic stopped it long enough for everybody to jump on. So, if so you didn't is it jump our, on, it's so it, good. So is, in that vein, right, you're going to do what you got to do for your children. Uh, you nah, know, I'm doing I'm what do, I got to do for my family. I'm so saying my, generally, I, I'm saying generally nope. speaking, that's how we think. Not, oh, not yeah, you yeah, specifically. Generally speaking, absolutely, generally absolutely. speaking you're going to do what I got to do for my kids. Children. And Will's then they do repeat what it. he got to do. I'm going to do what, it. what I got to yep. do. Yep. But. So there's no way. That's not there's necessarily. No way. It doesn't connect. I look at, I look at, I look at Voss and a lot of these kids and I see the same exact with all that's available to them, even my nephews with all that's available to them. And I tell them all the time, I'm like, yo, whatever you want to do, yep. you can do now. now. You can do right now. now. Yep. Not when mess you grow up. up. You can now. mess up for 20 years. Just keep messing up. But we're still do doing, we're still English. doing the, Yo, I'm going to go to college, and then nah. I'm going to do the da 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 See, and then, Trump, I told my kids that's not an option. Da, 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 da. I and took I'm it like, yo, table. who? Y'all see me around here selling all types of albums. I've been selling music y'all whole life, right? Mm-hmm. And so sometimes even from a personal standpoint, I dis- I'm disappointed in myself when... It's like, all right, I've slowed up the production and I've, you know what I mean? I've kind of pivoted a little bit from the music. And this is, I disappoint myself because I'm like, I wanted them to see the house get purchased on rap money. Because mm. I wanted them to know, like, 
Yeah. Nah, this is yeah. this checks from mm-hmm. from my shit. Mm-hmm. I didn't go back to work. You know what I mean? And so yeah. there's but they should be able to learn, and this is where I guess I'm getting back into like our community and our culture and sort of the mistake that we make when we just take a bite of the American dream and then just go about our ways. There are entrepreneurs in my circle that my seed and my nephews and my, you know what I'm saying, direct family members should be able to access. It doesn't have to be me. It doesn't have to be my brother. My nephew should be able to call up Uncle Flizzy and he can. Or Uncle Nam <laughs> yeah. and go, yo, I'm thinking about busting this move. Mm-hmm. And But we're so, we lock in on our unit so right. much that yeah. it's like, and like Will said, we're only that when it's social time. Let mm-hmm. somebody turn 50 or let there be a wedding or let there yeah. be a thing. Everyone shows up. But when it's like, yo, I'm building this thing, like, let me show you such and such, or like, I got this thing going on. Yeah, yo. Crickets. Yeah. We and should be doing about, baby showers. We should be doing business showers. And, and it's yeah. not about, it's mm. not about, it's not about, that's a fact. And it's not about support my thing, you know what I mean? This is not a plea for anybody out there. You don't have to stream nothing from Tron uh, I'm not yeah. asking you to. That's not It's the good, though. The, but what, we, what we're saying, though, <laughs> is... Let's make the unity, let's make the togetherness about all of it, yep. not just not about this. let's go drink and, and have some or barbecue. The, or the seven or, days after Christmas. You know what I'm or let's make yeah. the drinking and barbecue, like you said, celebration about of some business. Yeah, about it. About, so, now, his, so let me his, say this. Let me say oh, this. Oh, go ahead. Well, go ahead. Well, go ahead. All right. So for me, you said that we, Sean, I won't go back to when you said we have similar practices, right? We go to each other's house and that's culture, but culture is a collective of practices, right? Mm-hmm. And I think we can see certain similarities, but that goes back to then still paying attention to our differences, right? Mm-hmm. But what just happened here, though, is, and this is what I would like, is let's start putting it down, right? So Definitive Virgo, he said, my ego is totally out of it. Yeah, it's going. Me and you have already had that conversation, trying multiple times about our egos being out of it, right? Mm-hmm. So that's one of the things. If we were now to say, "Boom, we're building a culture," that's one of the things we assess people for: is your ego out of it? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, why are you building this business? Is it just to serve your ego? Is, is do you want to be a capitalist? Are you just about you? Because if you if you're about you, then you can't be part of our culture, right? You can go find, you can go create your own culture that's part of, right? Second, second tenant would be whatever business you're building, it has to be to help build up others, right? We just said you're going to create the, the the commercial kitchen. Commercial kitchen space, right? yes. That's a commissary and, then, and a, a small business incubator. And the Trom was trying to set the example, right? Like, boom, this is what it is. You can do this, right? This is giving the community back tools in order to, even if they don't want to be part of, let's call it our culture, mm-hmm. they can start to build their own, right? Right. This, this is tools. You don't have to, you might not align with whatever we come up with to be a culture. But as far as your blackness, go be productive. And not just for yourself. You know what I'm saying? Go be productive. Go do your thing. But we're going to still help you do your thing. Right? We don't have to be enemies. We don't have to be in competition. Right? We can be separate units, but then still be interdependent on each other at certain points. Right? Mm -hmm. And I think we should really start, like, itemizing the shit. So let me me ask this, because, and this will be you know, the segue we roll out on maybe, right? So we do have a culture, right? A global culture that has now permeated not only 
the entire diaspora, but the world at large. And so if there's anything that would be Black American culture, you would say that would be hip-hop culture. In terms of the safety and the security of people of the African diaspora, how viable is hip-hop culture? And what do we do moving forward with hip-hop culture? Do we destroy it? Or do we try and take it back? Nope. What are your thoughts on hip-hop Le- culture as it relates to the conversation we're having? And specifically, like I said, from the top of the conversation, we talked about safety and security. And how did safety and security built into your culture? I, all right, so I, I'm going to start because it's, a, it's, a, it's the same principle. I don't want anything back. Um... And I want to continue to allow it. I don't subscribe to it anymore, but I do enjoy some of its fruit. I was going to wait until after this podcast to listen to the Kendrick joint because I know that this conversation was going to put me in the right space. I just feel like I'm a, I feel like listening to the album will kind of fill me up a little bit more and, and, and charge up my battery for what I got to do for myself. Right. We got to evolve. We got to leave it right where it is. Um, and say, yo, that's, you can't, cause taking it back means that we regret it getting out. I don't regret hip hop getting out. I'm not a fan of the, of the, let's say it's an apple tree. Hip hop is an apple tree. We planted that seed, cool Herc and all of them and the last poets and, and, and all of them dudes were the, were the first fruit that bore, right? I'm not a big fan of this mushy garbage from the oversaturation of the apple trees, it's not hip hop in and of itself culturally. It's now a portion of pop culture. Hip hop is now the the predominant music in 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 the industry. Uh, uh, probably over. I no, mean, I mean, country it might it's be rock and roll. It yeah, is it's it's yeah. right. So when you hear every year about the introductions into the rock and roll hall and fa- hall of fame, eighty percent of them are black artists, and forty percent of those are hip hop artists. Mm. so leave it it's pop culture now it's popular now but that energy that went into planting that original seed has to maintain and stay we got to sit there and really make sure that we take the seed so and i'm gonna go back to this real quick because i think it, it i think it pertains um i've taken college off the table for my kids so if they decide to go to college it's because they want to because they have a path that they think they want to give a shot and they're going to look at it just like anything else so the same way that they would pick up a tennis racket because they liked tennis, go ahead and give it a shot. And if you don't like it, get the fuck back out. What I am going to show them is here's your father, here's Trump, here's my godson, Eli, here's Rocky up in DC that makes sneakers. Here's, here's all of these people that are making it on their own that are proof that you can take the things that you love and can do it on your own. And we learned the internet, uh, our network, and everything like that. So if you want to pursue college, that's a way. If you want to pursue this, that's the way. I'm just, I'm getting out of my, like I, that's where your ego, when your ego disappears, you no longer try to get people to do things your way. You just introduce them to a way. And you go, I'm here to help you get whatever it is that you're doing done. Mm-hmm. So when it comes to hip hop, Hip hop is just the expression of what's going on around us. When it became commercial, when it became popular, the capitalism crept in. And now that's when you see the abundance of the same types of art. But it still tries to plant new trees. So you'll get your trill. You'll get your trap. You'll get your you'll get your bounce. You'll have your 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 Oakland sound. There's still these things that are occurring that are like, yo, that's kind of new, not my particular thing, but I'm glad that that is still happening. We got to allow hip hop to stay, but we have to sit there and go, you know what? There's a dude that I rock with that I just happen to know, Trom Diggs. He got a, he did a collab with this group over in, in Europe. I think it was gas labs out there in Europe. Argentina. Right? 
Argentina, doesn't mm-hmm. matter. Another whole continent that he collabed with, and he got a jazz hip hop fusion thing going on. This nuts. Here, let me listen to Saks Fifth Avenue right quick and let me know what you think. That's what we have to begin to do. We have to continue to is allow what's what already exists. Allow it, but make sure that you're putting all your energy into what you should support. We got to stop this back and forth thing. Uh, yeah, I kind of, I'm kind of cool with the skinny jeans and no, 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 no. Let's support what we need to support and allow. It's it's okay that that exists. Well, I guess. Well, you, I, so for me, go ahead, Will. Go ahead, Will. So for me, well, the, well, we can't. There's no taking it back. It's out there. But yeah, it's for me, there, going back to what I was saying about culture before is you have your you have your the dogma, and then you have the practical things you can use. And I think right. Right. I see for the music and all of that and all all the other stuff. I, I look at hip hop like this. What are we defining as hip hop culture? Because I think we have the end user stuff, right? The music, the fashion. And and that's, I was gonna make that distinction. I mean, right. I'm not talking about product. Because right. even with me, like I you know what I mean? Like when I say, you know, like it's like, okay, you can you could you could promote my music. Mm. And I guess by virtue of promoting my music, that's promoting you know that's that's a that's a cultural thing, but I'm talking mm. about. Um, we don't own the culture, so right. you know what I mean? I'm, I'm a, making that. I'm, I'm making that. Of it. that making I get to what? Yeah, I think is <laughs> what we should take. I'm talking from, about the culture, not the product. Well, right. I think in, this is what I think. I right, so when I said end user, right? We got the product, and then we have what was what was the unifying themes that created the culture to begin with, right? So we have. The things that I want to take from it to build on would be creativity, mm-hmm. ingenuity, right? Mm-hmm. We'll look at those things that actually made the culture blossom. Innovation. Right? Right. Um, innovation, right? Mm-hmm. Um, even if you want to say fearlessness, right? To 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 go places and do certain things that other people wouldn't do. Right. So these are the things that I want to pull from hip hop that that's the culture is really founded on. But you don't see that because that's the back end stuff. Right. Right. That's not the end user stuff. Right. You don't see the mechanics and how that actually works. Right. So those are the things I think that hip hop has given all of us that we should take from it and then use it as far as. What they're saying is, is is out there is the culture again. It's just like anything else. Like we deal, we talk about America and the different ethnic groups. But if we go to China, we're gonna see if you you in, you're in northern China and then you're in southern China, you're gonna see different cultural things. You're not gonna see the exact same thing, right? Right. And so for the people that that have it now and they're doing what they're doing with the culture, they're gonna do it. But what we should take. And what we should build on is what we know, the mechanics of the culture and, and, and the positive and practical aspects that we can apply to everyday life. Mm, okay. Okay. I like that. I mean, I struggle with it, to be honest. I mean, I know how I feel um, about hip hop, but I've been, there's certain things like when you get into a space, you know, of being a grown man, that it's like, man, I got to draw a line on this. You know what I mean? And as much as, excuse me, I love it and I want to be a part and I'm still a part. I don't want to be anything, right? I am, I am, it is, it is, it's my culture. So, but when you're fighting a current, fighting against the current, and that current is essentially at this point death culture. It's all death. It speaks death. And it's like, well, this is my culture though. And it started from a place of peace, unity, love, and having fun, right? Like if those are like the original like <laughs> Zulu Nation pillars. And now we're at like, 
you know, just our, the cultural tropes, man, like uh, uh, money over bitches, um, you know, I mean, fuck niggas, get money, kill a nigga for no reason, uh, you know, all the shit that we know to be like, ah, oh, yeah, that's hip hop. Oh, in the and, words of Raekwon, can I say something? Can I say something? Go ahead. <laughs> Yo, but you know why that is? Because it became American. Mm-hmm. Right? Exactly. It became, it became mm-hmm. American culture. That's why it's what it is, is because we look at American media, right? Or American, American film. How many, how many Billy Kid movies have there been made? Right? We, we have so much anti-hero in the American culture that death, crime, uh, but my, my, but my, is my problem with my problem with that Trey is because you're not you're right. My problem with that Trey is none of those things are associated with the people who produce the product. Yeah, B- a Billy we're the Kid sending, movie. We're a Billy the Kid movie is a Billy the Kid movie. We're exporting wow. a Boys in culture, the Hood is a black movie. We're exporting a culture right. that is being consumed and it's creating these tropes, these Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It it's it's cuz it's a culture. It started a culture. as a culture. Right. And so right. it's like when I'm taking on this culture, I'm saying these people oh, are man. this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. And because, because people, no. there are people who are engaging in hip hop, who then go to engage in hip hop is to be this. Yeah, nah. And then, yeah, I can get, I can move. I don't. It's no different than like the little, you know, the little girls in the eighties. They, you know, or the or the or the dudes. They cut their, you know, sleeves off their shirt and they were rock and rollers for a second. They had spiked hair and they did that thing in high school and then they went on to college and they did their thing. So America. Um, from a large, from the, from the, you know, the majority or mainstream, whatever you want to call it, dominant culture, whatever you want to call it, they consume hip hop as mm-hmm. a phase, as a thing, mm-hmm. as, as a voyeuristic kind of relationship. As a product. As a product. And then they, yeah. it's like, that's my shit. But right. I, my culture is intact. I'm still whatever I am. In my ways of knowing him, in the way I move, but I engage in hip hop culture. But hip hop is our culture. So, like, we're the ones dying. We're right. the ones mm-hmm. being locked up. We're the ones going through it. And so, it's like, do you fight that current, or do you, you have put to. it down nah, and you have say, to. "Yo, you have to." We gonna Bro. do something else, or do you, Yo, or do you his- start the, you start the, kind of campaign on like, yo, that's not hip hop, which is what the old heads do, right? But that don't work. That's not hip hop. Nah, that's not going to work. Can I nah, ask why? Okay. Why isn't it hip hop? Because in it, the 80s, it. we was dying. Like, New York in the 80s was crazy. Right? And this is where hip hop was birthed out of. Like, right. African I, I, body and them is gang members. So, but I think correct. that I think and it that was it was as a, an ant as, yes. in opposition to right. that. Or, and or now it a, is a, that. A, if, it, it wasn't was a glorification, right? But it, it wasn't a glorification. Yeah, but it wasn't a glorification <laughs> of the events. It was a reporting of it. Right, right now, these dudes is doing the music first. Well, rappers and weren't then dying engaging. in the eighties, bro. Besides Scott well, no, Rock, the, the, rap, right. the rappers weren't. The rappers weren't dying in the eighties. They were reporting on it. Rappers were are reporting on it. But see, that's yeah. what I'm saying. So that's a shift in culture. That's a shift in the culture. So, that's, okay. I, so I get what you're both saying. Yeah. Anything? But now here's the here's the thing though. <laughs> Trom, you're you're you we of a certain age, all of us. And it, it you will always have the ability to create music. However, it may not fit in the demographic that you would like it to fit in or that you discovered it. So you'll grow out of that particular phase. I've never done a song, and I am part of the hip hop community. The hip hop community is about the how do I make something from my environment? That's what hip hop is. So hip hop is about the dance. How do I make something out of the dance based on the music that I'm being given in the hallways that I'm being raised in with the lack of education on proper movements and technique? Uh, Our artistry. We weren't given canvases, so we went and got canvases. There were walls, they were they were trains, they were bridges. There were there are dudes right now 
that at one point in time that are probably in their 50s and 60s right now that would have been able to climb Everest without a rope with the level of artwork that they were able to put on the size of a bridge. Like, how the hell were we getting up to those spots? But that's those were our mountains. I, being an entrepreneur, and I'll say I'm a hip-hop entrepreneur, I'm taking something and figuring out how to remix it. You said something a second ago about, you, because I, I could tell by the way you were even talking about it, how you're skirting that line, even when you're discussing skirting that line. I redid my labels for the granola recently, and I wanted to pay homage to movies. Hip hop, not hip hop movies. I did it for hip hop. I took the movies and I remixed it. Now I remixed it because I didn't want to have to worry about copyrights. That's why they were scratching. That's why they were cutting. That's why they were using only eight seconds of for break beats and things of that nature. Because sooner or later it was like, yo, I can't use this whole song. I'm a, I'm trying to be innovative. I'm trying to be creative. So let me figure out how to do something that nobody else is doing. Even that's different, but that's a se- that's a segue. But go ahead. Right, right, right. So, <laughs> so I had to sit there and skirt in that line of sheesh. What am I going to do? Because I can't. I got a I got a bag that pays homage to when Harry met Sally, and I'm like, I can't have Billy Crystal and Meg Ryan on my damn bag. I ain't trying to sell this dope ass product, and then have somebody come and tell me I got to stop because I got these people's face on it. So I'm talking to the dude that that's helping me to design them, and I just said. Why am I hesitating to tell this man to put my face on my product? Why am I hesitating right now? And I said, yo, I'm worried about people seeing my black face. On, and I just said, Fear. no, I'm not. Fear. Put my face. If there's a label that has a face on it, make it. So the peanut butter one is Indiana Jones. Put my face on that. My orange <laughs> mango ginger is the matrix. I'm Morpheus now. I'm Billy Crystal. I'm all of these things. So we have to we have to sit there and go that line. That's hip hop, bro. So we got to allow for trail. We got to allow for the bullshit murder and things, whatever, because what I'm trying to what I'm trying to do. And that's and one thing that's ego driven. That's ego driven. I'm putting my face on every bag because I'm not ego driven. I'm going to sit there and go, you know what? This is who I am. I have confidence in my product. And I, I believe that you'll enjoy it, whether you like a black man being on the cover or not. And I'm fine if you don't. Because I, I know the proof of concept's already done. This product is dope. So if so. So I'm hip hop and never so made a song. My, my, my thought has been mm. for several years now, once it was like I aged out of mm. the typical hip hop artist, right? Whatever that is. I said, yo, I got us engage because I have to continue to create, you know, to be the change I want to see for lack mm-hmm. of, you know, mm-hmm. and I want to be able to engage in the younger members of my family in a way that they'll listen because there's still, you know, a cool factor associated with Uncle Uncle D or Uncle Trump, right? So it's like, nah, Uncle Trump's cool. He got 500,000 views on YouTube. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And so- <laughs> That's social, that's social so, currency. So they'll listen, you that's know what I'm saying? And shit. I don't, I never wanted to be, but I guess what I'm, what I'm getting at is we talk about political power. We talk about economic power. We talk about all of these things that we must do. You hear all the talking heads. Like, we must do this in order to, you know, become, or we, you know, we go after power. The power has to start with the black dollar. We got to support black businesses. And, you know, and, and, or they say, we got to get political power. We got to be able to, burp, 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 burp. you know, everybody's got their solution, but they usually lie in politics and economics. Mm-hmm. Education. Uh, education. Right. None of that happens until we create a culture that makes all of those things together a thing. Right. Right. <laughs> you know, which, our, our kids, our kids won't want to be smart. They won't want to have financial freedom. Mm-hmm. They won't want to engage in politics mm-hmm. until the culture. 
makes it says yeah that that's the thing to do. Understand? There's a red. Mm. Th- this flag behind me is because of hip hop. Mm-hmm. With the key, right? Ignite because <laughs> there was a time where our culture mm-hmm. was pushing was an extension of mm-hmm. the Black Power movement and the Pan Africanist movement. Those were those things were in the music. And so the messages of culture were in the expressions of culture. Mm. And so hip hop music is an expression of our culture. So if I pulled up the Spotify charts or the Apple music charts or the billboard charts, and I showed you what was hip hop, that would be an expression mm-hmm. of our culture. Of our culture. Mm-hmm. What's going to happen when I do that? You're not, we're going to be like, nah, bro. <laughs> and like, so. Who signed off for so, this? <laughs> so, you know, whether we're reporting what's going on, whether, whether we're creating what's going on, that's a, you know, that's a cycle and a debate, you know, chicken out of egg type shit that it doesn't matter. The point matter. is at this point, the point is the things that we're trying to switch in, in terms of changing the mind state of our people, all the things we discussed in this program, there's no vehicle to get that done. Nah, I, I think there's plenty of vehicles. I just think that we haven't put our key in enough of them. We're focused on the same vehicle, the one that got us here. So when you think about hip hop culturally, we have trouble unplugging the music as the main source. That's the bus that we all got in and rode here. So even when we make our movies, there's two, three, four songs that we know are going to be in any black wedding movie. We have so we have to begin to sit there and go hip hop. That's like I how said, we express. That's how we express ourselves. Because that's right. so that's never not going to be the case. So we have to, but we have to realize that th- that we need to start figuring out what's our hip hop plane. Because if music is our hip hop bus culturally, what's our hip hop plane? What's going to take us overseas? What's going to take? I mean, mentally and evolution uh, evolution wise, what's our what's our hip hop subway? What's our, so what's the underground that we're going to allow to continue to bubble? What's our, uh, 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 um, what's our HOV lane? What's our Ferrari uh, for hip hop? Is, is Jay-Z and uh, is, the, is the new birth of hip hop billionaires our Ferrari? Are we going to sit there and look at them and go, okay, that's, that's the class that came from it, but it's still plugged in music. I don't, and I don't want to plug into sport. Because that still feels just as plantation-y I think, as music I, was. I think, like I think what I think I think where you're going, and I think the difficulty in where you're going is we're trying to find a vehicle that is not owned. Right. Right. <laughs> right. And that's right. the that's that's the, the problem. And, not, and this is why we don't have a vehicle. Right. We have we have parts. And that's we why parts. we don't have a culture. That's why we don't have a culture. Right. Right. Right? Yeah. We haven't built the vehicle yet, right? Yeah. We haven't built the vehicle yet. Yeah, we haven't built the vehicle yet. It's the dependency in what you said, Tron, when you said yeah. that. Yeah. It's our culture, but the, the Billy the Kid movie is not their culture because nah. that goes back to them having the vehicles of what imagery they're pushing. So you can have Billy the Kid in The Sound of Music as your double header. But your double header for the black person is boys in the hood and, and minister society. You know what I'm saying? So reinforcing because we don't control the machine. And they tell us, and then we go out and broadcast it that mm-hmm. these things don't make money. Right. Mm-hmm. No one, oh, black people don't want to see that. Right. Black people don't want to hear that. What you trying to kick knowledge? Niggas don't want to hear that shit. Now, more, you know, more importantly, I've done Hollywood, and this is what Hollywood says. If there's a black movie, and that comes out top of the year, and that movie doesn't succeed, then no other black movies get greenlit. Right? Mm-hmm. No matter the genre, 
Mm. But if that black movie does succeed, then that's the only thing we're gonna duplicate for the next. Oh, couple it's gonna years. be ten. It's gonna be right. ten. Ten of them starring so Michael every, Ealy and, 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 and um, Jones, and <laughs> yeah. loving basketball. Yeah. Then you know what I'm saying? It's gonna. Yeah, be we better hope Jordan Peele keeps it up. We better hope Jordan Peele keeps it up because he don't now. So then. So how I'm gonna look at how you feel about that because I'm one of them I've, dudes then because then I you know then we get into that bag and then I'll be like I right, with the black trauma I'm cool with the trauma porn too oh like, yeah of course, but no but uh, wait a minute like the Jordan Peele thing just uh, no nah, I think he's remixing about white but I think he's doing black people dirty but it's horrific and then it's oh, like not nah, but I, I think but I think he's remixing I think he's remixing I think he's I'm, taking I'm, it I'm staying tuned I'll stay tuned. Yeah, because I'm hoping that he still continues to sit there and be like, because you got to get in, regardless. When I he know. may get out, he had to make probably a ton of concessions. And then he said, I've, I've, I've watched him in interviews. He said, I snuck so much stuff into that movie. Well, you can, because they don't know. And, and see what you said, though? But I for snuck. some reason, we still create this garbage, though. So we still, cre- I haven't seen a slave. The last slave movie I saw was Django. That's because I knew it wasn't satirical joint i didn't watch 12 years a slave i probably have never seen glory all the way through um i i have peeped color purple as a matter of fact color purple was on the other day and i saw the end of it or whatever but i'm not i'm not a fan of of, of trauma or drama when it comes to that type of shit but i i think that you 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 literally bullseyed the trouble that i was having because i'm trying to figure out how to validate what I'm doing business wise when I literally, and regardless of intention, regardless of purpose, I had to explain myself by saying I had to get white people legit. So I don't own, so I don't own the space the way I do my body. If I wanted to shoot hoops or the the way I control my voice, if I wanted to make music. So you're right. As somebody who is a non-musical hip hop culture product, I am having trouble trying to figure out what, because I would love to be somebody who helps to make that next vehicle. But I'm like, sheesh, I would have to borrow the steel from them. I'd have to get the brakes from them. I'd have to use their factory. So, and so, it's, le, so let me let me ask this to um to wrap from each of you, and then I'll I'll, I'll you know I'll end with what with my thought on it. <clears throat> what is the how do I want to ask this from a sense of urgency? Cause we're in an urgent situation playing on a the theme of safety and security. What is the most urgent thing or two or essential thing or two that we must do to secure the safety and future of our people. Becoming a people. Being people. We got to become a people. Now, that's the thing we've been talking about the whole time. Who are we? Who are we? Who are we? Yeah. Right? There's a bunch of eyes, but who so, are so let we? So let me ask, let me ask, because so someone will say, okay, how do I do like what's an action step? How do I do that? What, mm-hmm. what, what I said earlier, you gotta start with we you have to come up with yeah. what makes a group of people who's the up. we that's coming up with it? Us, me, you, son, yeah, right here. Start, yeah, right? Who you can touch. start, start, you can with, start, you you can start touch. with the people that you, that you can, can touch, touch and start to create tenants. Right, because we mm-hmm. always we agree on certain things, right? We're right. not trying to force the circle into the square, right? Right. That's right. what the Finnish Berg have been saying the whole time. I'm not mm-hmm. trying to make you do anything, right? So this, so this, so that, so I'm gonna wrap that up, and I'm gonna say, organize, organize, yeah, by choice, yeah. You can't force nobody. What do you think? And what do you say, Fliss? Touch. It's, it's, it's very. It's, it's going to incorporate what he just said. You you have to begin to redefine family one, um, and realize that that's what it's going to be going forward because that's going to be the culture. So you you have to start with the people that you can touch, and you have to be unafraid 
to stop touching. You have to be unafraid to disconnect because it won't happen with dead weight. In the very beginning, and, and uh, this was a point. I'm glad I, I went back to it. You said, do I get out of the, the?" because you said it, you were in a um, the push that was against you. I have to stay in the flood. I got to stay in the flood because when I said I removed my kids from this whole thing of this college expectation, it was because I added another expectation by showing them another route. I can touch mm. my kids. My oldest son and my middle daughter seem to be the ones that are the creatives. My my middle son is more of a culturalist and my youngest daughter is a love. She's literally love. So I make sure that my daughter sees every aspect, every failure and success from what I do as an entrepreneur. That's the same thing with my oldest son, with, with music, because he is a product of hip hop and the world culture. So I continue to put my hands on them as far as entrepreneurship goes and say, hey, this is a part of our culture going forward. It's okay Word. for you to redefine success. So I'm going to say, so I'm going to say, organize, start with those closest to you. Yeah, man. And I would say in the vein of starting with those closest to you, start with yourself. Start with you. Read, have study, learn who you are, mm -hmm. define blackness or manhood, or whatever it is you identify as for yourself. Sec secure and the then, safety in your mind. And then, you know what I mean? Not yep. only express that, and mm -hmm. as you express that, you will draw your tribe to you. Absolutely. Your community You'll to you. You'll become a resource. And then you organize. Yeah. Flizzy, very quickly, tell the folks how they can access your platforms, how they can access your product, and anything you got going on quickly. It's your boy, Uncle Fleezy, a.k.a. V Definitive Virgo. DV Love is a t-shirt line that I have. Pangeon Granola. Uh, Definitive uh, DV Goddess is another t-shirt line that I have for women. Pangeon Granola is the name. The Definitive Virgo.com. Everything is there. Uh, please support Definitive underscore Virgo on IG. Add me. Uh, that's it. Brother Trey, you plugging anything? Just follow right now, Love Science TV show on Instagram. Dope. And we gonna when, when we ready to um thing, we gotta get you back on to um jump that off. I, I enjoy this conversation, brothers. I think periodically I'm gonna pull y'all up to um kind of have these uh brother meetings. This was dope, man. So um everybody out there, this is major journalism. This is David Trom, big shake. Peace and love, y'all. Absolutely. Peace. Peace. Peace.